Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Lucia Vesnicelovic. I come from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, and uh, I will. Uh, I'm policy analyst there. Um, I will talk here about uh, political campaigns on social media in Europe. And uh, at the beginning, I just want to say that the views that I present here are my own and not of the Commission. So, what is a Joint Research Center? Joint Research Center is an in-house science and knowledge service for the European Commission. We provide research for different uh, policy uh, directorates. Um, and uh, as you can see, we are not only in Brussels, but uh, uh, all around Europe. I work uh, in the unit which is called Foresight Behavioral Insights and Design for Policy. So we also run a European policy lab. And uh, the policy lab is an experimental and collaborative space with the aim to bring innovation to policy making. In order to do that, we uh, engage very much with citizens and with uh, different stakeholders. Uh, what I currently work on is uh, an interesting project on the future of government. We are looking at how the governments might look like beyond 2030. And uh, this is the project that combines foresight, so uh, future-oriented studies with uh, design for policy. Um, we uh, are uh, focusing especially on changing power rel relations in society and how this influences uh, uh, the relationship between citizens and governments, how technology, for instance, Internet of Things or artificial intelligence, um, or information abundance or digital platform economy are influencing these relations. So how did I get involved in uh, all this? Um, in 2008, uh, I did my traineeship at the European Parliament. Um, that was uh, one year before the European Parliament elections in 2009. At the same time, it was a, a period uh, when uh, we had a um, campaign for the US elections in 2008. And uh, also, it was a period when uh, Obama started to use uh, social media a lot. So that was something that uh, interested me, but um, I was thinking um, that I could maybe explore something, but uh, more in Europe, if uh, Europe is willing to uh, uh, also start using uh, social media. I started my PhD one year later, um, with the topic of the role of internet in political communication with the case study of uh, the European Parliament elections. I focused especially on uh, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Twitter was something which was very rarely used. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, I was exploring the use of social media as a new campaign tool that can be used for advertising, but uh, uh, what was even more important for me is the way that politicians communicate and interact with citizens. Um, that is how I started my journey in uh, this uh, digital politics, digital media and digital audiences. So uh, we often hear today, uh, we often hear uh, that uh, um, there is a crisis of political participation, which is characterized by low trust, uh, diminished interest in politics and uh, low turnout. The turnout is low, especially on the European Parliament uh, elections, but also on national elections. And uh, uh, the most popular reasons among non-voters are a lack of trust and uh, interest in politics in general. And uh, they often say that uh, their vote cannot change anything. Um, this lack of interest in politics is uh, in some countries very high. For instance, in the Czech Republic and in Portugal is around 71%, in Romania 70%, in Croatia 75%. So uh, this diminished interest in uh, uh, electoral politics me means that citizens seek alternatives uh, or are being manipulated uh, to more populist actors that seek to gain power. Um, Trust connects citizens to institutions and uh, drives political engagement. And uh, uh, low trust weakens political uh, knowledge and leads to manipulation. That is why uh, this is uh, important and public trust in uh, governments in Europe and in the European Union is in national governments, national uh, parliaments and the European Union is between 35 and 40 percent. So we can say that every third person uh, doesn't trust uh, their own government. Uh, similar is also for media. 
uh, more than 60% of uh, people in Europe uh, tend not to trust media. Um, at the same time, we trust platforms. Um, how are social media used among politicians? So, uh, when I started my research in the field of digital media, I was quite optimistic. I believed that uh, the possibilities for this two-way communication will be a remedy to political crisis and the democratic deficit that is present in the European Union. And uh, uh, so the goals of politicians are to make their uh, campaign more visible, to get the message out and to attract voters. Um, we see here also shift towards more personalized and candidate-centric uh, politics. However, the content uh, is not always suitable for social media, as we already heard from the previous speakers. Um, politicians often use only some uh, posters uh, that they use otherwise in the campaign, or uh, TV commercials, or they don't really think of a specific strategy for social media. And uh, most politicians use social media one way, so they are broadcasting and not really uh, interacting with citizens. Um, what is different from traditional media is the possibility that they have to express their views directly and not to be filtered um, by uh, uh, intermediaries. There are also differences between different European countries. For instance, in the Netherlands, Twitter is very popular, while in some other countries, Facebook uh, is much more. Um, also, platforms provide uh, opportunities for citizens uh, to connect with uh, politicians via uh, shares, likes, retweets, follows, or comments. So um, citizens can meet like-minded, but also debate issues from different perspectives. At the beginning, it was seen as a great place um, for enhancing deliberative democracy and the public sphere. So it, was a space to, uh, it is a space where we can comment on the candidate or issue and campaign and enlarge our political knowledge. However, social media are rarely used for engaging uh, with politics and discussing. According to some research, 60% uh, of those who are on social media don't follow any politician or political party. And one of the main characteristics, uh, if they do, is clicktivism, so mainly likes. We are putting likes or uh, maybe we share some content, but we rarely, really write. A typical follower of a political party or person uh, who discusses politics uh, um, on social media is male. Otherwise, males write more comments than females. Females uh, put more likes. And uh, it is also seen that they are either left or right. Um, there are less people who are in the center. Um, also, there are some possible problems if we think about uh, uh, citizens' engagement on social media, such as uh, state surveillance of citizens or corporate surveillance and, uh, of, of citizens and uh, their political expression, um, which can be um, scary for some citizens. And, of course, creation of uh, filter bubbles, uh, algorithmic profiling uh, and, and similar. So, um, here are a few examples of uh, um, social media presence. First, the uh, European Parliament. European Parliament says that uh, they provide chats with members, twice daily updates on EU affairs, a tab to find MEPs active on social media, and a tab for national information offices. So, the European Parliament has currently 2.5 million followers. I believe that it's the only parliament uh, in the world with uh, so many followers. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm... I don't think that parliaments are so uh, present. And uh, it mainly informs citizens of the event on the parliament, so it can be, we see it as another top-down communication channel. Um, they are quite active. As they say, they uh, post updates twice daily on EU affairs. Um, and uh, it could be a good uh, example of institutions' presence, but it is used without a good strategy because there is uh, uh, the unused potential for a two-way communication to provide a better sense of connection and belonging of citizens to the European Union, which is quite important. And um, there is no development of uh, EU identity and citizenship, and I think that social media could help with that. And also, uh, this Facebook page has little potential to uh, reach 
uh, young people and stimulate their participation. Uh, different uh, countries can have different uh, strategies. Some politicians are more popular than the others. Um, this is an example of three uh, of them. Um, the one on the right is um, Guy Verhofstadt. He is a Belgian uh, politician, member of the European Parliament, former Prime Minister of Belgium. He has uh, 400,000 followers which is maybe not so uh, much, but when we compare to the uh, population of Belgium, it's like almost 4%. Um, his uh, um, communication strategy on social media is interesting because he uh, posts uh, on Facebook and on Twitter only in English, or mostly in English. Um, and uh, these topics are mainly European topics, uh, so European community and uh, uh, also uh, comments uh, of people are written in English. So his target group uh, uh, are not ordinary citizens, but uh, Brussels bubble, so-called. Um, he is active and provocative. Um, many people are engaged and they do write some posts and comments, but he rarely answers. Also, topics are very uh, European. Uh, some of the last topics are um, about Brexit. Then we have uh, here on the left, uh, Hert Wilders, who is a Dutch politician um, from uh, an extreme right party, a populist party. He has almost one million followers on Twitter, which is around 6% of uh, Dutch population. Um, the characteristics of his communication is uh, one-way communication. Um, he uses uh, Twitter to uh, provoke, to insult people, and um, his, uh, his posts are not filtered like on traditional media, so uh, he uses it uh, to pass his short and aggressive messages mostly, or even retweets uh, all artic articles from all media that uh, uh, write about him, even negative ones. And in the middle, we have uh, Kolinda graber kitarovic uh, current Croatian president and actually a former colleague of you uh, in NATO. Um, she has 400,000 followers, which is compared to uh, the population of Croatia, 10%, so quite a huge amount of people who are following her. Uh, she's from a right-center party. Uh, however, um, with her, uh, we also saw one-way communication, there are no replies, there are no discussion among uh, uh, people who write comments. And also another characteristic is uh, deleting comments. So we saw that many comments get deleted. Um, the um, comments are very emotional and uh, also she has quite heterogeneous group of followers because we often see uh, them um, fighting some hate speech also if they're not like-minded. Um, so that's her. And uh, another example is uh, in Italy, Beppe Grillo. Um, he's a politician, a populist. Um, his blog is very important and strong. While I lived in Italy, uh, almost every evening on uh, TV, on main TV news program, on public broadcaster, they were uh, quoting him. And like Beppe Grillo said this uh, on his blog, Beppe Grillo said that. So um, I was really wondering uh, what is so special and different about him and why media uh, so much uh, magnify his uh, uh, message or importance. Um, Beppe Grillo currently has uh, around 2 million followers on Facebook and uh, around 2 million on Twitter. He is one of the rare politicians that uh, has uh, uh, so many followers on both uh, media. His message is quite simplistic, that uh, the politics is corrupt, um, elitist and closed, and uh, uh, his supporters come across spectrum, they're neither left or right, um, and they are angry about the state of democracy. He managed to channel um, Italians' apathy and this fr frustration into a powerful political movement, talking directly through his, his blog and uh, now also Twitter and Facebook, uh, at the same time while organizing some uh, political meetings um, in the offline space. And so, um, when I started uh, my uh, research in the field uh, 10 years ago, 
the Europe was embracing uh, social media as a campaigning tool. Um, the Europe was looking at the US and uh, it was very optimistic about the use of social media in campaigning. Now again, um, one year before the European Parliament elections, we are turning to the US and looking at the uh, elections in 2016, and uh, there is a fear that a similar thing might happen that happened in the US. So the context has changed. The trending topics are now digital manipulation, propaganda, disinformation, um, the uh, foreign influence uh, in all EU countries and how to prevent it. But um, you will hear more about it later today. Thank you.